Hello, welcome to a very special Pinken podcast. Uh, my name is Connor Southwell. I was delighted to be joined by uh, former Norwich City right back Mark Edworthy for this episode. And it's a, a really nice chat, actually. Mark's a, a terrific guy, as I'm sure you'll, you'll sense throughout this chat. But we touch upon, uh, there's not too much coronavirus chat, actually. So if you, if you listen to this in, in self-isolation or you're working from home, then this is absolutely a, 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 an hour of escapism with, with Mark, who's, a, as I said, was, was a tremendous bloke, an absolute gent throughout this chat. We discuss... Uh, his time at Norwich City in full, starting with that 2003 to 2004 uh, title winning season. He gives his view on um, perhaps why that squad was so special. Obviously, the the win at Portman Road that took them top of the league, that you might remember that. The influence of Darren Huckabee and Peter Crouch as well. And then we also discuss perhaps a, a little bit more of a, a turbulent time for him, which was the, the 04 05 season. Obviously, Norwich City suffered relegation, that famous 6 0 defeat to Fulham at Craven Cottage on the final day. Uh, he discusses his uh, contract dispute with, with Nigel Worthington. Although perhaps dispute is, is perhaps a little bit dramatic, how he found uh, newfound competition with with Thomas Helveg as well. Plenty more in there for you uh, for, for your uh, enjoyment. I hope you enjoy it. Of course, if you do, make sure you leave a uh, review and subscribe to the Pink and Podcast as well. Obviously, in this absence of football, we'll keep trying to bring you regular podcasts for you to listen to to get us all through this very difficult uh, difficult time. Indeed, enjoy the podcast with Mark Edworthy. I guess the the first question. I know, obviously, you've, you've got your links with uh, with Derby County. I think there'll be a, a few Norwich fans who are, who are keen to know sort of what what you're up to at the moment because we, we don't hear too much from you. Well, no, basically, obviously, when I you know I had a fantastic time at Norwich, as you know, you know, winning the championship was uh, was absolutely fantastic, great times there, and I think it was well documented at the time. Never wanted to, never wanted to leave the club. I loved it there, and. Uh, yeah, that's what happens when when you start um, managers make decisions and uh, you know contract. I, I didn't end up signing the contract. So I had a great time there and obviously left Norwich. Uh, and and where I'm spending my time now, I'm actually uh, living in Derby. I've been in Derby now. Uh, we had got our three boys in school, and um, I I did some work regarding the hospitality. And then I was made one of the ambassadors of the club, which was a a, a really good um, a really good opportunity from the chairman who who gave me Mel Morris. So what that means is is doing the hospitality match day, interviewing man in the match, uh, speaking with the players, doing some stuff for the community, the community trust in Derby. As of Norwich, I've, I've got great communities and uh, their trust are doing fantastic work um, for the city. And also um, we do the Rams TV, which is uh, our own broadcasting station where we talk about all the present games. Um, they do podcasts, they interview ex-players. So there's a real mixed bag and they do some live feeds regarding every home and away game. So it's it's a real mixed bag and it, it keeps me involved in football So and obviously keeps me busy as well. So it's, uh, you know, keeps me out of trouble, as they say. Yeah, well, that, that certainly is the main thing. Uh, what are your, your main reflections? I mean, obviously you can sit here now after your career and what are your reflections of, of playing for Norwich? Because it was quite a, an interesting time. You obviously had a, a lot of joy in, in that first season, but then equally perhaps a, a few turbulent times in the second one as well. Yeah, it was. I mean, I remember going up to Norwich as a cow road and um, out to the Coney training ground on the Thursday and the season was going to start on the on the Saturday and um, I was out of contract. I'd left Wolves and um, it was difficult because the ITV Digital collapsed and the back then. And uh, I remember uh, calling Nigel Wellington to say, come up for a training session. He trained up at uh, Coney on the Thursday. The training session went really well. I was in the hotel. I think it was the, uh, if I remember rightly, I think it was the Holiday Inn on the corner there, mm. um, just as you come into Norwich. And I was in there for the night and a couple of nights, and he said, you want to get something something done. And we were playing Bradford away um, on the uh, on the first game of the season. I came on at half time, And then I think 45 games later, I think I only missed one or two games that season. Ended up winning promotion, which is a... Uh, a fairy tale, really. It was a it was a fantastic season. Um, like I said, Dan Huckabee's a good friend of mine. Ewan Roberts, mm. um, obviously Craig Fleming, Malcolm McKay. The list goes on and on. We had a, we had a fantastic squad, um, and things just went well. We were hard to beat, and, and and it was a it was a great time. Probably one of the highlights of my career. It really was. I think if anybody says you look back on your career, I was very fortunate to play at Wembley and win playoffs at Crystal Palace, Derby. And and Wolves um, going to Leicester to win in League One, but winning the championship outright was was just a, a fantastic achievement. And you know, great supporters, love the fans. It was a great place to play, great place to sort of live. And I, I was really happy there. And that's what happens with football sometimes. You know, we got promoted. Uh, times are great, and then you get into the Premier League. And we found we were doing okay at times, and it was is a bit different to where the current squad is now. 
it was in our own hands. We had to go to Fulham the last game of the season. Uh, and if we won, we, we would have, we would have stayed up. And mm-hmm. I think it was us, West Brom, Charlton and Crystal Palace. And famously, West Brom were bottom at Christmas and Brian, um, Brian Robson was uh, the, the manager. And obviously they stayed up. They won and they stayed up and we got relegated. I mean, we ended up getting hammered 6-0 at Fulham. And the, the, the end, of, it came to a bit of a sour end because when I, when I finished, uh, that season, I wasn't involved in the last few games. I didn't play against Fulham. Um, I was left out of the squad just p- purely because the contract situation, I wanted to stay. Um, I was promised certain things and, um, you know, that's what happens in football. People change their minds and, and I was really, really gutted to leave the club, but. The you know, time it was on, obviously, I've, I've met Nigel Wilson, um, Nigel Wilson since, you know, we, we get on really well and, and, and you put it down, so that's what happens on football. But if there was any regret, it was certainly uh, leaving Norwich at, at that time because, um, you know, I, I loved it at the club and it was it was a fantastic place to be. Mm, and, and, and just to bring it right back to the start, I, I, I read that literally a, a couple of days before you, you sort of uh, came to Norwich to, to have those training sessions, you were, you were with Alan Pardew at Reading. Was that the case that summer, the fact yeah, that you were sort well, of going around a few clubs? Well, basically what happened was I was, at, I, I was promised um, a contract at, at Wolves um, and that, that sort of didn't happen. They signed Lujny from Arsenal. So, mm. you know, I was without, without a club. So it was a case of you know, the pre-season of starting and the pre-season. So I was... You know, keeping my my fitness up and and going round, you know, trying tr- trying to negotiate and and get get a game or even you know get get a get um some so a, a training venue. Um, I went to Stoke as well. I was with Stoke for a little while. Went there training for a while, and again, they they promised you things and it didn't materialise. And I went down to Reading with Alan Pardew and played the game and everything went really well. And he said, you know, I really want to get something sorted out. I want to sign you and stuff. And I was waiting and waiting and, and time was, you know, I didn't have the time really because the season was about to start. And they ended up signing Sean Gota. <laughs> and Sean Gota, obviously, at the time was uh, famously field, feed the goat and he would score. And he was, <laughs> he was you know, he was, a, he was a fantastic player. And he looked up to me. I went down and spoke to him at, at Southampton. And um, sorry, yeah, they, we were playing. We were playing Southampton. That's right. Reading were playing Southampton. It was the last game of the season. So I went down to Reading at the Medici Stadium, and it was their last game before the you know before the the start of the season. And he said, "Look, my budget's gone. I can't. Um, I can't sign you. I've signed Sean Gota." And I was like, "Well, what am I going to do then? You know, mm. I'm, I'm left. I'm left in the lurch of it, really." So. I remember travelling back from Reading without a club and then, of course, famously, that's when I got the call from Nigel to say come up on that Thursday. So I was around. I, I did go to Stoke. I did, to, did go to Reading. But unfortunately, at the time, it, was, um, it wasn't the best time to negotiate and uh, there, there was no contract on the table for me at that time. Mm. And, and, and you said you got the, the phone call from, from Nigel. Was that something that, that came out of the blue a little bit or, or were you aware of Norwich's interest before, before that phone call? No, no interest whatsoever. I think at the time, if you're out of contract, obviously the managers and, and, the, and the staff get get a list, and it's a surplus list that goes around about players are out of contract. And you know, I, I'd um, I was obviously on that list. Uh, and then you know, Nigel sort of called up and just you know just said, you know, what what am I up to? And I just said, basically, I'm out of contract. And it was amazing because when he did call me up, I was thinking, do I really want to go up to Norwich and am I wasting my time? Because you start doubting yourself. When you when you you know when you've been a sort of season pro and 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 then people are questioning um, signing you, you think you know have I still you know am I still good enough? Have I still got it? What's happening on? And, and when it gets put down to finances, unfortunately, uh, that was the case. But yes, yeah, so I went up and lucky the training the training session went really well at Coney, and then uh, yeah, uh, you know, the rest is sort of history. But um, yeah, but it, it was it was just a, such a fantastic time after such a you know such a really tough tough summer of, of trying to get a club. I mean, you, you mentioned there that the self doubt you had in yourself was was there any doubt in, in signing for Norwich? Because as you said, it's it's a little bit out of the way. Perhaps some people consider it a bit too far out of the way um, to come. But it it was an interesting time for the club, wasn't it? Because they, they just lost the the playoff final. Perhaps the the squad was was fairly strong to go again. Did you did you see that, or, or was uh, there a bit of doubt about coming to Norfolk? Um, no, I don't think there was any doubt. Obviously, that you know the pedigree of the club, and I played against them before at previous clubs, and that was a, a you know the rivalry between Norwich and Ipswich which was huge, fantastic club, and that always when I went there was always you know even as an away player was was made to feel very welcome. Um, I know they're very passionate um, in Norfolk about about their football, uh, and when I signed, I I, I realised how, how that was because it was you know every every home game was full, um, packed house and. Uh, 
they're just great supporters who love their football, really passionate. Uh, their way, the travelling fans were great as well. And it was just, I seemed to just settle in really well, um, settled in really quickly. Um, that helps when you've when you got a good squad and, and good people around you. A real fantastic family club. Delia was a very special lady and, and Mike uh, uh, at the time still. So I've spoke to them a, a couple of times when, we, when we've crossed paths when they came down to Norwich, but mm. that's when they come down to Derby. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just a fantastic club and I really did have a, a great time there. So definitely no doubts at, at signing for Norwich at, at all. Brilliant to hear. And, and you mentioned your, your debut earlier on it against Bradford. Uh, you, you're, you were obviously quite, quite an experienced player when you, when you arrived at Norwich. Um, did did you get any nerves about making your debut, or, or was it just, or was it just something you, you took in your stride? I suppose. Yeah, I think you take it in your stride. Obviously, when you come with a bit of experience, you know, you, you want to just lead by example. And to come on at half time, I think we drew the the game at um, at Bradford two mm-hmm. two, uh, and um, we, then we went on and I think we played Northampton in the cup. I think we got knocked out, so we didn't have the greatest start to that season. But as time went on, realised the quality of the squad. Obviously, Rob, Rob Green went on to you know, become a, a, an England international. And we had you know, Phil Moore Ryan, uh, Paul McVeigh, uh, Mark Rivers. You know, the list goes on. And we, we, had to, we had a real mixed uh, squad of quality and hard work. And, and it just gelled. Obviously, Gary Holt in there as well. You know, the list goes on. We had, we had a fantastic, fantastic squad. And we, we just, I think the, the dressing room and the banter and the, the environment is why we, we've become such a good team because we looked out for each other. We were hard to beat. And, you know, it, it was just great time. So I just think you went in there with your experience. You just you just play your way into any club. I sort of kept my head down. And then I, I knew a few players from before, as we sit down in hockey. We knew you and Roberts from playing them against them before. Um, but was made uh, made very welcome early on. it, And that helped me settle as well, which, which is always good for a player who signs for a new club. And, and you mentioned the quality of the squad. Was that something that, that was evident on your very first training session or is that something that actually you, you realised over a period of time perhaps the quality that, that was in that group? Yeah, I think when you, when you, um, when you go into a club you obviously assess it and you know, they have some very uh, course on the, on the backlash like you said of, of losing the player final um, you know, they, they have they, they had some quality players players do come and go as well in, in that period of time and obviously when, when Crouch came in Huckabee and then they, they, they signed Huckabee full time um, you just realise you you had a good squad in just to tweak it, just to, to really have a push. And I think the championship, every so often, you get that window of opportunity to get promotion. As long as you've got a good squad, you can score goals, and um, which which we did, and we became hard to beat. That was certainly our window of opportunity, and and the talent was there. And and on top of the hard work, I think when you start winning games as well, that breeds confidence. And without we we went sort of like um, cocky in a way. We were just we were confident when when we went out onto the field uh, as the season progressed. We just knew we weren't getting beat, and we, and we were very hard to beat. And that that's why I think I'm not too sure if, uh, if I'm correct. But I think our last sort of ten games. I'm, I'm sure we won eight or nine at the last mm. ten games, which mm. is a which is an outstanding finish to any season. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and you mentioned the the seasons the season pro earlier uh, Fleming, Mackay, Roberts, Huckabee, again to, to name a few yourself. Obviously, what was it? What was it like? Was that was that a different dynamic to the dressing room that you were used to? Because it, it was a squad full of of big personalities and big characters. Yeah, there was certainly a lot of uh, banter for sure, which, which I think you need in any any club. You know, that, like say Malky, Flem, Adam Jury is probably one of the quiet ones. But you know what a what a fantastic captain leader he was. How could we add all the flair and you know and Phil Moore Ryan, um, Paul McVeigh? You you had a lot of banter in there, it, it, which 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 you need in any football club. You train together day in day out. You know you're going to have in different times, but. There, there was there was such a good relationship in that dressing room, and I think the respect is a big word I'd use. We all respected each other. Yes, we could you know take the mick out of each other within reason, and that's what happens in in any football club. But it, it was very respectful, and, and I think when you when you've got, for instance, if we was going out and you was going out for a meal or something, or even even a drink, you know there wouldn't be one or two. There'd be like you know fourteen or fifteen people who would turn up. So that just go, just goes to show. The character which we had in in the dressing room and, and the respect for each other, because if there was any social event, uh, we, we'd all stick together, and I, and I think that um, you know bode well for our success because um, you know we got on so well. 
is is togetherness the word because uh, I think there's there's often a, a few groups, particularly in the championship, that you can look at as perhaps I suppose Neil Warnock's Cardiff a couple of years ago is a good example that perhaps doesn't have uh, doesn't perhaps ooze quality, but what it does have is is a lot of togetherness and it functions well as a team. Would you put yourself obviously you had a lot of quality as well, but is that togetherness a, a massive reason of why you had success during that season? I think so. Yeah, I mean, it, it's right. Respect togetherness is a huge word. Like you say, you know, people train and play, and, and they got families and, and want to socialise. You know, in their own way, that that's fine. But you you haven't got to, you know, be best of friends off the field. But but we were very close off the field as well. Regarding if there was an event, we did have that togetherness, and and there wouldn't be like one or two that would turn up. There, there'd be a, a mass, or the whole squad would turn up. And I think that that bode you know so well as we've mentioned but that the togetherness in any squad is huge um especially in difficult times as well because you're going to have in different games you're going to lose games as well and you need to pick each other up and players are going to lose form as well they're, they're going to have in different games and i think everybody in that squad and that togetherness rallied around so well and that that's why we were so successful is that is that something that nigel worthington created do you think that togetherness or is, or is that just something that was that was naturally created, I suppose, by the group of players you had at the time? I think with, with, with any manager will say, if you've got good players and, and you manage them well, so we're winning games. And when you're winning games, you've, all, you've already got that ingredients for success and you, you've got the professionalism there and players love winning games. So training, when you're winning, training becomes high intensity. It becomes quality becomes that because the results are coming. So I think Nigel managed that really, really well. Again, Nigel was very, very professional. Uh, when, when he needed to, to air his voice, he did, but also he, he had, he, he, you know, he, he had the he had former player as well. Obviously he had a great career himself, but he, he also had a bit of banter as well, but you didn't ever cross the line with him. And I think that that shows that respect to him as well. Uh, and I think he, he handled that, that, promotion year fantastically well he, he he just knew um when to intervene at times but when you're winning games as you said the, the training ground everybody wanted to get in and train and for a manager when players want to do that you know the training sessions become um very high standard uh, and because the success was winning games and I, I think he managed that superbly well yeah, I suppose in many ways it's it's the easiest and, and hardest part of being a manager because if, if the standard in training goes up, then that makes team selection more difficult, doesn't it? Especially in, in a team that is, is winning games because then that's that's difficult to change. Yeah, I think what he did, um, you know, which you see now with the rotation in squads, which is fully understandable and, and the amount of games they play and, and uh, trophies that are on offer, it, it was very much of if you could keep a winning side and if you were playing well, you sort of kept the shirt. And I think players were that consistent. If you weren't in the side, um, you know, you, you almost accepted it. No one likes being left out. No one likes being in the side. But when the opportunity came, if you took it, then obviously he would, he would, um, you know, repay you by by keeping you in the team. Because so I think the back four, I think most of us hardly missed. I said it was probably one or two games between myself, Robert Green, uh, Malky, Flem, and Adam Jury. Um, and regarding the midfield as well, that that changed slightly, but the back four and the goalkeeper um, hardly changed. So that that was really a, a really strong unit, which which I think Nigel built from defence and goalkeeper. Obviously, Robert was in outstanding form that season, and Nigel, being a defender as well, realised how important your defence was, uh, and then sort of moved into the midfield. And, and we had that flair and attacking through Huckabee, Rivers, um, Crouch when he came. I uh, feel more rhyme will pop up some goals for um, Paul McVeigh. We, we had we had lots of quality who who could dip in with goals, and um, that obviously helped us get promoted. And in, in terms of you individually, what, what was what did Nigel say to you about what your role in the team was? How did you view that? How did you go about your your business in that Norwich City side? Well, I think he, he just you know uh, said to me to get onto the ball if I could. Um, you know, calm things down, use your experience. And But like I said, we had Malky back there, we had Flem, mm. um, Adam Jury, Robert Green. We, we were very fortunate. We had a, a really good, strong unit there and organised. So um, we had a lot of sort of leaders back there uh, who could talk. I, I was quite a good talker as well, more encouraging and stuff like that. So it was just a case of keep organised, um, you know, organised about four. And I'm pretty sure he said that to Malky and Flem as well. And, um you know, Adam was probably a bit more quiet to be led by example. He, you know, his football did the talking, and then you know I used to get on the ball. Get, I'd like love to get forward as much as I could, but he always used to remind me. You know, remember you defend first as well. But um, like I said, when games are going well and and you're you're playing with confidence, 
you know, I was pleased. I was pleased the way, you know, I was playing. I think that that rubbed off on the rest of the, the players and the rest of the players rubbed off on me because, um, you know, I, I was really pleased at how how the game, how, how I was playing personally and how the team was playing as well. Yeah, you, you mentioned the importance of a of a, a spine, essentially, in a, in a team earlier on with with the back five that, that you mentioned that barely changed. That obviously, you were a part of, and I think you had a, a pretty good defensive record that season as well. But it feels like we can't really talk about that season without talking about, I suppose, the influence of, of Darren Huckabee and, and Peter Crouch when they arrived on loan. How much of a boost did, did those two give you as a group? Because sometimes signings can come in and they're perhaps looked at as, as a little bit of a threat, but it, it seemed with, with that group, those two players were, were really embraced. Oh yeah, they were. I mean, I think Crouch was at Aston Villa at the time, and I think where his career went after that, to think he played for England and Liverpool. And soon Crouch kind of, I played against Crouch here many times. I remember playing against him at Portsmouth when he was a, when he was a winger on my side. He played like left wing, and mm. you know had such a great touch. And you know, airily, you had obviously no chance against him, but, but was such a big guy. He had such a great touch, and, and he was a, a brilliant finisher as well, an out and out goal scorer. And Hux, I played against Hux many times at commentary with Hux and uh, played against him when he was at Leeds. He, he was always a threat, so much pace, um, so difficult to play against, so difficult to mark. And I remember Hux never never scores easy goals. He, he always scores like these wonder goals. And I think if you got, he, he's he's a sort of player you have in a team where you know he can win you the game, he can change games. And and those two, that partnership, even with Big Ewan up there. You've got that dynamic of Crouch being a big target man, but it could also finish uh, set plays. He was brilliant um, a for and against. Um, obviously, when he was when he was attacking wise and defending wise, Big Ewan w- w- could score goals and, and link it up. And you had Hux, who almost like had a free role. I, I, I'm pretty sure he gave Adam Jury a few grey hairs, but um, <laughs> you know he, he, we, we allowed him to do that. And almost like the squad and the players accommodated him because he, he was a match winner. So when them two players came in, I think the response from the Norwich fans and the team, you know, they they gelled straight away and and they performed superbly well together. Do you think it, it those two players? I mean, Huckabee obviously obviously signed permanently, but but do you think those two in particular gave gave that Norwich squad the edge they needed to to go on and win the title? Oh, definitely, one one hundred percent. That's that's the difference when in any squad you, you've got to have. You've got to have players, you know, who keep organised or hard to beat defensive wise. And you also got to have your flair players and your match winners. And that's certainly what Darren did. You know, he, he worked really hard. People probably question, oh, you know, his defensive duties. But you can't, you can't say that to Hux because, you know, he, he's so, he's so good on the attack and he does so much for the squad and he, and, he, and his assist rate and he creates so much. And obviously when Crouchy come as well, you need those certain bits of quality in any squad. Um, you know, to go on and win things, and they they certainly were, you know, a huge difference to the squad. And I've got to ask you about a, a massive part of that season, certainly from from the supporters' perspective, which was obviously uh, going top of the league at, at Portman Road in the local derby. That was obviously a, a massive day for for everyone involved with the club. You played ninety minutes in that game. What do you remember of it? How 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 special a game, I suppose, was that for for you guys that season? Yeah, it was amazing. I heard about the rivalries. Obviously, I'd, I'd done sort of like Coventry, Aston Villa, if you want to call that a bit of a derby. Or, or um, you know, I've played in uh, Palace, Brighton and certain, certain sort of so-called local derbies. Um, even when I was back at, at Plymouth, like Plymouth Exeter, stuff like that. But the Norwich and Ipswich games were, were, were huge. Fantastic atmosphere. Um, you know, we, we talk about up in Norfolk, how, how they're so passionate, the Norwich fans. And, and a good friend of mine, obviously, Liam McKenzie signed. And I was at I was at Crystal Palace with Leon. And um, again, very difficult player to 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 defend against. He was very unpredictable. And I think he scored, did he score two on the day? I think yes, he did. Yeah. And um, yeah, to go, to go in your rival's sort of backyard and go and win and then go top. It was just, uh, you know, I, th- I think we played well as well. You know, they had their chances, but that just showed the resilience of the squad. And I think moments like that when they come in your career to to win a to win a um, a derby game away from home, you know, doesn't get much better. And I'm pretty sure that the Norris fan fans certainly enjoyed that day, especially going top as well. And I think we embraced it when we went top as well. When we were top. A lot of teams, when they do go top, you know, you are their team to beat, of course, and everybody raises their game to beat you. I think we embrace that and um, love that challenge of being top. But yeah, that that certainly was a a fantastic game to be involved in. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just I'm looking at it now. I think that that uh, that result was the first time you went top of the table, and I, I don't think you got knocked off it and, and until the end of the season. So uh, you essentially 
claimed first place and, and kept it to the end of the season. So it goes to show how big a result it was in terms of for the overall season, even though perhaps that's remembered as, as a special day, the impact for the for the wider season was significant, wasn't it? Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, if you think when, when you do go top and you, and you are there to be sort of shot down, and meaning, you know, all the all the other teams, you're the, you're the team to beat, aren't you? They, they raise their game against you because you are top of the table. And I think we embraced that so well. And to think we stayed there and, and got promotion from that, from that day, really, was just a, a fantastic... Um, you know, just just so to show how, how good the squad were, and I think we ended up winning what by by eight points in the end in, in front of West Brom because mm. you know West Brom were a quality side, a, a, a real challenge. And they were our sort of nearest rivalries, um, or nearest rivals. Sorry, but uh, yeah, it, it, it was a, a you know a, a, a pinnacle part of the season because, as you rightly said, we go and win there, and we stay top, and then and ended up winning the championship. Was there any particular game you'd, you'd pinpoint as sort of knowing in your mind that this was a, a good group who, who had potential to get promotion or, or was that just something that was ingrained in you throughout the season? Um, I think with the start, when it, it, was, it was a bit of a slow start. You know, we, we didn't, you know, we progressed. I think that's what the Championship allows you to do. Um, I remember when uh, Roy Keane was at, uh, at Sunderland and they lost the first six games and ended up winning it. So, mm-hmm. You you can catch up and and it's a case of little mini runs that gets you, gets you out of the league and I think that's what we did. I, I don't think we ever got beat um, consecutively on the road. I, I think we we'd lost the game and then we'd like win or draw. So we had little mini runs which which you know got us momentum. Yes, we would lose games, but I don't think and if I'm right, I don't think we ever lost two games on the trot, two league games anyway, back to back. So I think that yeah, probably the Ipswich game when we went top. Uh, that day uh, and to go and beat Ipswich away from our I, I just felt even building up to that game you know you don't want to peak too soon of course and that, that sounds a bit crazy thinking well you know you want you want to get top as soon as you can but the championship also can be uh, it's a long journey 46 games it's, it's a long season and you don't want to peak too soon so I think the Ipswich game going top uh, the timing was good, always around about Christmas time. And they say if you're nearer, damn it, at sort of Christmas time or going into the new year, you've got a chance because that's where relegations and promotions, you know, are, are sorted. And, and I think that that really was when I was thinking, you, you don't, you, you don't, I don't think Nigel said it amongst the squad. He just kept the standard very high. But I think it, deep down, he thought, you know, what a chance we've got here. What a chance we've got, not only of winning it, but getting promotion. And I think probably that uh, that was a point in day at it, which I thought, you know, we, we've got a chance here. We've got a chance of going all the way. And and I, I won't say I, I thought we were going to win it. I, I just thought we're going to we're going to get a promotion here. And and to win it was just, well, it was just fantastic. Yeah, I suppose the the fact you had a, a, an experienced squad probably helped you that second half of the season because uh, it probably helped sort of suppress expectations, emotions. I suppose to to some extent within the group, even though. Perhaps you were all aware of the opportunity you had. I obviously want to talk about clinching promotion. What was what was that like for for you? How big a moment was that for you in your career? Because as you said, you you pretty much played consistently throughout the season, didn't you? So to have such a big role in it and to be a part in such a, a special group, as as you said, that must have been uh, that must have been a real special moment. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, as I said, you know, before we started chatting, certainly the highlight of my career for sure. To to win anything is great, but to win the championship outright is 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 fantastic. And I think you, you, you're right there. We had that experience, like you and Roberts, Malky, Flem, myself, um, Gary Holt, uh, Rob Green, just certain players who, you know, we had some young players in there, some, some real stars as well, and and had some real talent. We just didn't get too carried away. Yes, we 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 enjoyed the wins, of course. But um, as we said, the training was always very professional, such a high standard. And I think that that was a, a massive part of how how we did um, sustain that, that top position uh, after beating Ipswich away um, from the character on the side and the maturity of the side. And I think, yeah, the, yeah, the, the times come, they are special times, as you said. To, to to play that many games and and how it started signing the, on the you know going up on the Thursday not knowing the squad going straight into a training session and then up picking the the championship trophy at the end of the season was yeah was it was was a massive highlight for me and and the squad and and met some wonderful people and and you know friends for life as they say you know we football players move on and but I'm pretty sure you know we've touched base on a few occasions with a few players and. Uh, of course, we reminisce about the good times, and, and that certainly was a fantastic time. 
I mean, you, you've just alluded to it there, and it's, it's perhaps uh, made me think about it a bit more. But considering, uh, as you said there, you didn't really know where your career was going after leaving Wolves. Obviously, you had a few offers, didn't quite work out for you at Reading. And then to end up a, a team that won the title, for you personally, that, that must have been, uh, again, you, you spoke about self-doubt, didn't you, at the, the start of the of this chat. So that, that must have really felt good, I suppose, for you personally, because that was, that was a hell of a season to come in on, um, considering... As you, as you say, you, you had some doubt about the direction of your career. Yeah, I, I suppose it is to look back on that. But, you, you know, you get welcome with good players and, and, and good people. Uh, but you've got to go in and do the business, as rightly you said. You've got to go in and train. You've got to, you know, there's no guarantee that I was going to be playing. I had to fight my way into the into the team. And I think, um, you know, that, that was an opportunity which I seen. When, once I'd signed for Norwich, I thought, you know, I put everything behind me regarding the, the awful summer um, not having a club. And just to took the opportunity. I'm a great believer when an opportunity presents itself, can you take it? And um, I certainly took it, but I didn't expect it to end that way. Um, but as it progressed, as we said, I, I enjoyed playing. Um, I, I was playing well in, in a good team, which always helps. And um, it, it was a fantastic end to it, um, considering it was such a difficult season. So I, th- I think you've just got to, just got to trust yourself and. Um, I was very, I was very happy in the environment I was, and I think that that has been reflected on how the players performed that season. And, and just finally, on on this season, we've got to talk about those those celebrations at, at City Hall. How how spe- obviously the the club had one this this summer. How how special is that for you as a player and and for players in general? Because it's it's not something that that comes about often. Obviously, players can can go through careers without winning anything but but to win something obviously the title and then to to get that reception in front of thousands of Norwich City supporters in the city centre again we I mentioned special moments that that must be an image I suppose looking out from that balcony of all those Norwich fans that is going to stay with you forever yeah it, I, I think the last couple of games I think we went to Sunderland that's when we, we actually clinched the title and I remember you know uh, drowning um, Nigel Worthington I think we drowned him in um it was probably a, a, a sports drink to start with and then probably squirted him in champagne after we got um uh, it, it was confirmed and obviously that the Watford game was was a kind of atmosphere and and, and he just you just so pleased for the fans as well because they they travel um away from home and and the turnout at Carrowell was incredible and then of course when we went down to to receive the trophy i mean it, it was just uh, the scenes it, it certainly is true you talk about the highlights of your career i know there's highs and lows and you've got to enjoy the good times and there's going to be bad times regarding results and and if you get relegations was i had a couple of but when those when those um great times come along which they did i remember get, looking at some video footage actually back along it was just incredible the scenes i mean the the, the norwich people who turned out on that day you know credit to them and, and it was just just so nice to give something back to them and, and to give them the championship which, which they deserve from from all their travelling their support well, were fantastic times I don't think I've ever seen so many people in my life it was it was incredible <laughs> incredible scenes which um, yeah which which you, you you're always going to remember and and, uh, and enjoy yeah just just uh, well let's let's move into the, to the Premier League season then um, with with hindsight I suppose it's it, it's an, an easier question to answer this but do you think the the club made a mistake in in terms of letting you and go letting Malky Mackay go and I know that certainly supporters feel that way but is that something that that you feel when as as someone who's part of that group at that time I think what what it was and I, I mean I was I was really gutted to leave leave the club it's certainly I, I didn't want to leave the club at all I, I was happy there my family was happy there and I was you know, really, really could see my, my career lasting a long time there. But as we said, things change in management and regarding contracts and stuff. And like I said, you and Malk, I, it was very similar. Funny enough, when I when I was at Derby, when uh, we, we we got promotion, I think managers are, are under pressure, and and you know you, you don't want to point the finger in, in any way. And the the gulf between the Championship and the Premier League is huge. I think what what you've got to do if you've got experienced players and they're fit, uh, and they and they're gonna they're not going to play every game. We know it's a squad sort of game now. The likes of Ewan Roberts, uh, Malky Mackay, um, you know, great characters for any football club. You know, even myself, my experience, you know, the list goes on and on. If you can, if you can bring some players through, whether it's through the academy or buy some younger players in, I think that that's a nucleus for a fantastic squad. But, you know, the people behind the scenes, the chairman, um, 
uh, and obviously the CEO who issue out the contracts. It's a business as well, so you've got to fully understand that side of things as well. Uh, they're probably thinking about the age thing with myself and Malky and Ewan and, and you know, was it the right thing to keep us for another season? You know, that, that that's a sort of a... You know, catch twenty two question really. Uh, personally, I would have kept them guys because I know what know what they bring, and and not only on the field but off the field. But that comes down to obviously the manager and the uh, the, the people beyond the scenes, the financial people, to sort of make the right decision. Absolutely, and obviously for for you personally, you went into that Premier League season and, and suddenly found that there was a, an extra bit of competition in in terms of Thomas Helveg, who of course is, is was massive in in Italian football. Had played for both the Milan clubs. How, how did you view that competition? Because that that must have been an interesting time in 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 terms of for you. Because it, it, I suppose it's difficult for that because ultimately it's about the team doing well. But equally, you, you want to do well within it. So is is was that something you saw as healthy competition or? Was it perhaps a, a bit unwanted from from your perspective? Yeah, I think any player, and that's where it comes down to experience as well. I suppose if I was a bit younger, I'd, I'd have been a bit more, you know, frustrated about the situation. But you know, as an experienced player, of course you've got to have competition for places. Of course you've got to bring quality into the squad. And Thomas was a a, a fantastic player, um, great pedigree, and obviously he was coming into the Premiership for the first time, and rightly so. You know, Nigel probably thought he needed that experience, he needed that quality. Um, he wanted to bring some signings in for the fans as well. So I, I never, I never sort of, uh, I just, I just seen it as another um, challenge for me, uh, a competition between ourselves, but but healthy competition. Obviously, if Thomas was playing, you wanted him to do well and play well, and we we supported each other really well. I think just from our experience, and then it soon come about that you know Thomas, the difference between the Italian football to the Premiership is completely different, um, a lot more. Um, probably not so much more physical, but it, it, it's the, the the pace of the game. I think was, was a lot different. And then obviously I got back into the side, and um, we, we had always that healthy competition. But you've always got to bring quality in, of course, especially in the Premiership because you know you're potentially in the best league in the world. You you've got to have quality players, and you, the most important, you, you've got to have competition for places as well. Yeah, absolutely, and and obviously with that season, you, you didn't record your your first win in, until November, and and we spoke about the togetherness, and obviously, winning's a habit, isn't it, in football, and and you went from uh, the end of the championship season where, you, as as you said, you won what eight out eight nine out of ten, um, to then struggling to to get any win at all. Did that dent the togetherness? Did that perhaps dent what what the atmosphere, I suppose, around the club in the dressing room with, with the manager as well? Yeah, I think it does. It, you know, results. We're in the results industry, aren't we? Of course, and there was different personnel as well. That a lot of, lot of, as you said, a lot of players move on. A lot of players um, come in, and and you, you know, you, you're meeting different people. You're trying to um, get the squad together and, and and get that understanding. And um, you know, that that was always difficult. And when you start losing games, especially in the Premiership, it, it's very tough. And if players lose form and and they not so much doubt themselves, it is. It's a it's a league that can be um, very grueling as well, and and it can bite you bite you very hard. And it certainly did. And I think we were struggling with results, but the idea was if we finish fourth from bottom, you know that's a successful season. I think any club that comes up from the championship, the gulf is is growing now. I mean, look at the the present size down there at the moment. Normally, two from three always we struggle each season when they come up, and. Um, it was it. We did have the opportunity the last game of the season against Fulham, so our destiny was in our own hands. But unfortunately, it just wasn't to be. Because I think we we did have enough to start that season, and probably when we reflect on it, a couple of results. You know, if but maybe we got a point there, we won there. You know, three more points would have kept us up. Mm. So you know, it, it did come. It did come so close, and and it was very you know sad end to to, to get relegated after, after such a fantastic season. Um, Considering you know we we came so close, yeah, agreed. And and you've you've obviously touched upon your your contract situation, and uh, I've read a few places d- describes it as a, a contract dispute. Maybe you can uh, tell me whether or not it was uh, it was quite as 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 dramatic as that. But in in terms of your relationship with Nigel Worthington at that time and around your contract, was there a, a little bit of friction there, or, or was it always sort of you you both regarded it as as, as that's the way football is? Um, well, you know, like I said, you don't want to, you don't want to start, you know, pointing the finger and that, and I'm not that sort of person, and wouldn't do that. I mean, I got I had a great relationship with Nigel. I think when I first come in, you know, I think I signed on the Thursday before the start of the season. We said I signed a two-year contract. I played 
what sort of 43, 40 games that season, and then went on to play in the Premier League as well. And and I was going to go in to negotiate a new contract. And he said, "Yeah, no problem. We'll you know we'll we'll speak to the um, the people involved, i.e. the chairman, and and sort your contract out." And and it didn't. The, the negotiation didn't actually go that well. Um, so it wasn't a case of oh, I'm asking for lots of money and I want to stay here. I think I, all I wanted to be treated with was a bit of respect and you know be, being put onto the um, sort of save Wayne length as the rest of the players. I think uh, I think I, I thought I think I deserve that after after signing on a free free transfer and then obviously playing the number of games. So so I almost earned myself a new contract. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was off I was off 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 at the contract but you know it, it wasn't it, I don't think they were looking after me as well as they could have let's just say that um, and, and that you know that's being honest that's not being disrespectful to the club in any way whatsoever uh, and in the end um, when we weren't winning games which didn't help when you're negotiating a co- new contract it's not, it's not great if you're not winning games and then I think we got to about five, six weeks towards the end of the season. And then Nigel just basically looked up and said, look, you're free to go. We're, you know, we're not going to offer you a contract. Mm, and I was like, yeah. So I was like, well, OK, uh, this season is still going. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm still I'm still in your squad. Which, mm. What do you mean? You know, so that, that's for me to sort of, you know, throw my from my toys at the pram say okay that's it I'm not playing for the club and soak but of course I had to maintain my professionalism because one I was going to be out of contract mm. and I had to I had to keep my high standards and, and obviously for the for the fans and and the club you know we wanted it we wanted to stay in the Premier League of course so you know we parted company shook hands with Nigel at the end it, it, as we said sometimes it, it, that's what the way football goes um I, obviously, I met up with him again because I obviously then went to Derby and obviously we played Norwich and I had to mark my good friend of mine, Darren Huckabee, which was an eventful <laughs> afternoon and we beat Norwich. But, you know, I, you know, I don't know what pressure Nigel was under. Um, you know, sometimes it comes down to football. I, I, did he make a mistake? Uh, yes, I think he did. And, and I laugh at that because we, we laughed and, and shook hands with each other when I left because I, I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm not... I'm not going to boast anywhere. I think I was consistent for the club. Um, I really enjoyed my time there. And considering we were going down to the championship, which we got relegated, you know, he knew my record in the championship, you know, promotion with a lot of clubs, knew what to expect. So there was no real reason to sort of, you know, you know for me to leave the club. And I think that's why where I was disappointed where, you know, I, I wanted to obviously stay and get back into the premiership if we, if we could have, um, because it was such a fantastic club. Yeah, I think you're, you're spot on there. You, you make a, a, a lot of good points um, in, in terms of, of that time and perhaps the, the mistakes made by the club generally. And, and obviously, we can we can talk about Nigel and, and perhaps the way it ended for him at Norwich. But I think I think generally, in, in terms of him, we touched upon you and and, and Malky. I think supporters generally see see not keeping those those two on as, as a mistake. I'm sure as they they do with you and the experience you'd have you'd have brought to that championship season. It sounds like from from what you've said there, you, you felt a little bit undervalued by the club in, in those negotiations and, and perhaps towards the end as well. Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think that's probably a, a fair way of saying it. And, and of course, it's you know I I, I never um, have any regrets whatsoever. The only regret was you know probably you know leaving the club because I was so happy there and 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 I, and I enjoy playing there but we know you know that that's what happens in football um you know we know it's a business people's got to make decisions as you said I had a great great time there with Nigel and, and I think he did a fantastic job he really did um you know he was under certain pressure you know Malky was trying to sort out their contract you and you know the list goes on players unfortunately do leave football clubs and, and a lot of quality players do leave football clubs and and the fans are always always the ones who who miss out because they they all have their favorites and 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 I think you just put it down to the industry that's what the industry is um it does happen unfortunately um yeah, and you know whether mistakes are made or, or whether you know there's players who leave football clubs go on to bigger better things and it doesn't work out you know you got that side of it as well so mm. i think it's a real mixed bag of of what happens in the football club and it, it is you rightly said it is down to decision making and sometimes those decisions go for you and unfortunately they don't and, and sometimes you get them wrong if we just uh, finish up looking at that season then I mean obviously Dean Ashton came in in, in January gave, gave the squad a little bit of a lift but I mean I'm, I'm, I'm looking at April here in, in terms of the fixtures obviously beating Manchester United 2-0 a 3-3 draw with Palace and then beating Newcastle and Charlton and obviously beating Birmingham as well to, to set up that final day um, game against Fulham which is as you said if, if, if Norwich would have won that they'd have stayed up Um 
that great escape that nearly happened. Obviously, what what was it like in the squad at that time? Was there was there a genuine belief that it could be done from that perspective? Because I mean, you, you said there, there's probably a lot of regret about um, the fact you you didn't manage to stay up. I mean, you gave yourselves a, an unbelievable opportunity, didn't you? Oh, if if, you, if if any manager has said any player said, right, you're going to go down to the last game of the season, it's in your hands to win. OK, it's away from home to keep your Premier League status. I, I think everybody would, you know, would have signed the paper. Mm. Um, and I think just goes to show Nige what, what a fantastic job he did by putting us in that position. The team are doing superbly well. Dean Ashton come in. I mean, I remember playing against Dean many times, that crew, fan, fantastic player. And I'm really unfortunate that his, his career got cut short because, you know, fantastic talent. And we, they did put themselves, I was in and around the squad. They did put themselves in a fantastic position. And, and I think there was that belief. There was a belief we could go to Fulham and, and it was in our hands. The destiny was in our hands and we, we could get the result. And, you know, it's one of them where, you know, I bet it's talked about and talked about every scratch in the head to think, you know, you're going to get beat. But to get, to get beat 6 0 was just mm. a, you know, was a, was a real, it leaves a real bitter taste in the mouth because it was a, you know, it's almost like a thrashing. That is, that's not a beating. That that's that's getting that's getting thrashed on the last day day of the season. I think it, you know, it was a real shame that it ended that way. Considering what we give gives ourselves, we, we sorry, give ourselves such a wonderful chance. Yeah, you, you mentioned that game against Fulham. I think I think the natural question for the, the Norwich fans will, will want asked is, well, what happened? Because as you said there, it was, it was in the destiny. Obviously, as, as you can imagine, there's so many conspiracy theories about that day at Craven Cottage. But was it just a, one of those where it was just a, a, a terrible day at the office? Yeah, I, I think I think that, that that's spot on. I think the preparations went great. You know, for the for Norwich fans, preparation was good. The, you know, there was a good belief in the squad. There was a good banter. And, you know, we believe we could go down to Craven Cottage and, and, um, and, and get a result simple as that and I think we, we actually I remember you know the the crowd behind the go you know fantastic support as always I mean I think we actually started the game quite well mm. you know the game started quite well and then when one goal went in you thought okay fine and then when it became two or three I just think you just seen then the sort of like you know the energy and the blood just drain out of the players they just you know feared the worst and and when you when you get yourselves in that position it's you know the harder you try the worse it, it becomes sometimes and I think that was a result of that game it was just you know such a frustrating end yeah it certainly was and and as you said uh, from, from there everyone knows the the story don't they in in, in terms of you and, and and leaving to to join Derby um I, I want to ask you a, a little bit about Norwich currently because obviously they've, they've got Young fullbacks who are who are really impressing in the Premier League. One of those, Max Aaron's, obviously a, a, a right back, um, being touted around with with lots of clubs for for a lot of for a lot of money. Um, what 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 do you make of him? Yeah, I mean they've got some fantastic uh, players there, and they really have. I think they've always produced young players uh, for the academy, and not only that, they've also signed good players in. And and I think that the, the way they play, I mean, in the championship, they're outstanding. And and he's got such a there's so many young players coming into the squads now, and I think it's a you know great for the well, it's great for Norwich, and 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 it's also great for the Norwich fans. But it's it's only great for them if you keep the likes of the, those players because you know they're super talented and those are the players you want to watch week in week out. He, he has got a wonderful future. Um, he's, he's playing superbly well in the Premier League at the moment. Ideally, they'd love to keep him, but you know, any club that potentially could get relegated, the vultures are going to come out and, and they, they go for the, the young, top quality players. And, he, and he's certainly one of them, but I, I, let's hope he can uh, stay at Norwich because he, he is he is such a such a good player and he's got you know what, what a wonderful future ahead of him. Absolutely. And, and I suppose the, the one thing that, that being at Norwich guarantees is, is game time, isn't it? It certainly is as well, and I think you know it is a as we mentioned so many times. It's such a great place to play, and and we've seen so many youngsters come through the squad, and they do, they do produce quality players, uh, and and I think you, you just feel very comfortable playing there. Great stadium, great great fans, as we talked about, and um, you know let's hope you know, we talked about the the point situation and and our case against us at the moment regarding the the coronavirus, but there is mathematically enough points for them to stay up and. And let's hope if the season does does continue, um, they they can win enough games that to to get themselves clear of the relegation zone. Absolutely, and I suppose that's that's my final question in in terms of survival. They they're going to have to produce a, a very similar run to to what you guys did in in two thousand and five, um, but obviously bettering it. What what advice do you give that that current group to to actually go on that? What lessons have have you learned perhaps in your career that that you could give to them? 
Well, I think it's just belief, isn't it? I mean, the players won't, won't need me to say they've got some quality players at the squad. I think you know, it just goes to show their last result. You know, they, they, they've gone and beaten Leicester, which was, was a fantastic result, and, and they beat obviously Tottenham in the cup game. And uh, uh, whether it, you know it was on penalties towards the end, but you know, it just shows that, that they have got the quality um, they need to. to to get themselves out of it and why it's mathematically still possible with 27 points to play for you know they've got to believe they've got a chance and I think they will I think um, they're very professional as always and uh, and as long as they get the, enough points let, let's let's keep everything crossed and hope they can win enough games to just clear that relegation zone